Ross. Right. And just tell me a little bit about um, what are you uh, coming with today as far as uh, uh, accusations for a police officer with JPD? Well, we're here this morning. Uh, we plan to ask the United States Attorney's Office and the Department of Justice to take over an investigation of a Jackson police officer who has repeatedly sexually assaulted a minor child in a police car, and so far no action has been taken by the city. Okay, and can you just explain a little bit of details about, you know, what exactly went on with the minor and the police officer? For a period of a, about six months, this police officer befriended the child and he uh, repeatedly sexually assaulted her in a police vehicle. He also videotaped the encounters. And how uh, traumatic has this been for the family? It's been very traumatic for the family, and what's been more troubling is the family's, the police department's response to the family, uh, a calls to the police chief that uh, we're more than 24 hours past before the chief himself showed up to interview uh, the child and to watch the videos, and then more than 48 hours after watching the sexually explicit videos, of this child with the police officer in one of his cruisers. The police chief still has taken no action. We do not think that that's appropriate. Uh, the police are here to serve and protect us. They are not here to do us harm. And in this case, we have a police officer who has done harm to a member of the public, and the police chief is sitting on his hands. We want him to do his work or have someone else to take over this investigation. Okay, and have you ever covered anything like this as far as, you know, a police officer with a minor here in Jackson? There's, I, I don't know a case of a police officer here in Jackson, but it happens. In one, one case, okay. it's too many. A police officer should not, should be protecting children. You know, it's about to be summertime. When people see something strange, if we see something, we ought to say something. And that's why I'm here today, to say to the police chief of this city that he is supposed to protect all the citizens, especially women and children in this city. And we should not be uh, worried about being stopped and encountering a sexual predator. The person should not be on the force. Okay, and what, and what action do you hope the chief takes, you know? Uh, actually, if the chief can't handle this investigation and get justice, then he ought to let somebody who's capable of doing it do it. And he ought to do it expeditiously, not wait. I've seen people uh, arrested on less evidence. Okay. And um, how painful, I guess, or how challenging was it for, you know, this victim to come forward? It was very challenging. And then, you know, in these kind of cases, it's very challenging and hard for people who have been sexually assaulted to come forward. And it's harder for them to come forward because when they come forward, we have people like the police chief here in Jackson who sits on his hands, who asks all kind of inappropriate questions instead of taking action and getting justice. Okay. And when was this incident first reported? Uh, we, it was first reported to the police chief on Saturday morning. A direct phone call. A mother spoke directly to the chief. Uh, the chief promised to see her that day. And he has many officers working for him. It was not necessary for the chief to come, but he should send his sex, his sex crimes investigator out of someone. And then when he finally got around to it on yesterday, he still did nothing. And when I tell you the videos are explicit, they are explicit. I mean, you wouldn't find anything worse on Pornhub. Y'all have a copy of them? We do have copies of them, and we plan to turn all of the evidence over to uh, Mike Hurst and the Department of Justice because we do not believe that police officers should be out uh, violating citizens' uh, constitutional and civil rights. Okay. Um, when you was looking at the video, what was going through your mind when you saw it? Well, uh, let me just tell you, the videos are too explicit to watch, and I ha have the videos, you know, I could tell you that, uh, imagine that uh, you are with a cop and he's committing an act against you and you hear all of this police radio transmission going on in the background. It's not safe. We're not safe in Jackson with police officers like this man on the force. When you say repeatedly, how many 
times that it occur that we actually know of? Repeatedly over a six month period, and once or, tw once or twice a week, repeatedly, it was occurring. Okay, um, anything else you wanted to add or on anything like that? I'll answer your questions. But, it, you know, it's very important that we take action immediately like this. And I, I do believe uh, the kind of uh, conduct that this police officer engaged in, I would be shocked if there's only one young woman who's been on the backseat of that police vehicle being filmed in a sexual act while he is on duty. Okay, and the way that um, you said the chief has not responded in the past 24 hours, does that say something about the leadership with JPD? Well, it says something about uh, his appreciation of the harm that's done to women and children who are assaulted, and men for that matter, who are assaulted and who, who are victim of crimes. I mean, you ought to act quickly, you know. Uh, get this man down here. If it was, if someone called him and showed him me doing those things, I would have been arrested by now. You've you've settled several lawsuits with the city of Jackson for sexual harassment and other cases. Do you think there's a culture that exists at JPD? I do think there's a culture that exists at JPD, and that's why, another reason why I'm here this morning, especially on behalf of women and children. This kind of attitude cannot. Uh, be allowed and it should not be tolerated. I mean, leadership comes from the top and the chief ought to be lead, lead. And we gave the chief an opportunity to lead in this situation. You know, when I received the call from the mother, the first thing I w wanted and said, we need to go to the police immediately and report this. It is a crime. And he has had time to respond and he has not responded in an appropriate ma manner. What would it take? How many times, how many videos do you need? One of the chief's first questions to the mother is, do you have any evidence? And she said, of course I have videos. And then even when he sees the videos, he can't tell the media what action he's taken against this officer. This man still has his badge, he still has his gun or if he doesn't, the chief ought to tell us so that we can feel safe when we go up and down the streets. What if I'm stopped by that cop? What if the cop stops a 15 year old in the middle of the night? Let me tell you what he did to this young girl was unconscionable and there's no telling how many others are out there. And we want the focus on him. We want people who have seen something to say something. No, I'm sorry, we came from an event. Do you just mind giving us a brief summary about what happened? Okay. Um, I guess uh, right before you answer that, is there any uh, specific charges that you are seeking? Well, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not the one in charge of filing charges, but I could tell you as someone who has defended people who have committed uh, sexual battery, that this case uh, is, uh, it, it involves a person who is entrusted to protect us, uh, committing the same crimes that uh, ordinary citizens have committed they're in jail, he's still walking around with a police badge. That shouldn't be tolerated, it should not be acceptable. I expect the mayor to speak out on behalf of protecting people in this city from sexual predators. Can you give us an idea what the victim's age is? She, she was 15 during the time that these incidents were happening. How did the mother find out, or can you well, reveal that? there were things going on in the, around the house. Mm -hmm. uh, that were out of sorts, and she began to investigate it. And you know, imagine a woman who gets up every day. She sends her children to school. She's working and struggling to put food on the table and keep a, a roof over their heads. You know, and to find this happening, I don't want to really say mm -hmm. a lot because I, it's very important for me that we protect the identity of the child because of her age and we don't want her to uh, suffer any more trauma. Do we know how they met? The police officer, if you remember the videotape of the police officer pulling up on the young girl the other summer, asking oh, yeah. for the child's phone it, number, and it was an incident similar. So he approached her? He approached her. Uh, do you mind summarizing here? Yeah, we just came from another event. That's why I want to know if we're Okay, well, we're here this morning uh, 
to announce that we're asking the Department of Justice and Mike 